So as an audiophile, life isn't always a straightforward process. We get into this hobby simply because we want to enjoy music a little bit more, and oftentimes it doesn't end up being that straightforward. You go out, you buy your first set of budget pair of speakers, and you know, you're pretty content with them for a while, a couple of months, maybe even a year or two, but then you get that itch to upgrade. So you go online, you look at the different forums and reviews which are out there, and you find out kind of like, you know, what's popping off. But um, soon you come to realize there's just so many different opinions out there that you don't know who to trust. And it can often be confusing for people who are just getting started into the hobby. It's even confusing for people who have been around for a while. So in this video today, what I thought I'd focus on is a few ideas what seems to be floating around in the audiophile community and um, just give my opinion uh, regarding them. Of course, this is just my opinion. Um, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below what you think afterwards. But the first thing I wanted to talk about is this idea of the law of diminishing returns. Now, something I haven't actually mentioned on the channel before is I used to work um, in a hi-fi shop as a salesman. And you know, that was a great experience for me. I definitely got to hear a lot of high-end uh, pieces of audio equipment. But one thing I learned whilst um, you know working at this shop was that um, this idea of the law of diminishing returns is just simply not true as long as you know what you're doing. So, you know, there's no point going out there and spending twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars on a set of speakers and not having you know the rest of the components to keep up, right? So I'm not just talking about the obvious stuff here, like making sure like you know you've got sufficient enough amplifier and that, for example, you know your turntable is of sufficient quality as well. I'm talking about the finer details, which will make a big difference in a high-end audio system. So I've talked about some of these on the channel before, but if you're running a digital audio system, for example, ensuring that you've got a good power supply on your internet router, the mains distribution is very important as well. So all these things, I know, you know there's skeptics out there, but at the end of the day, all these things do make quite a big difference. And what you'll tend to notice is, is that the higher you move up through the chain, the more noticeable these things tend to become. So that's definitely something to bear in mind next time you hear someone mention the idea of the law of diminishing returns. I would just take it with a pinch of salt because it's not always the case. The next point which I wanna focus on is the objective versus subjective argument and where I stand on it. So the way I look at it, there is a lot of people who are on the objective side of things and a lot of people on the subjective side of things. I kind of stand in the middle I understand that measurements and specifications are important, but I also appreciate that, you know, you actually need to use your ears to listen to audio equipment. And everybody out there has got different tastes and preferences on what they like. Some people prefer, you know, kind of a warmer class A or class AB sound. Other people prefer more analytical uh, class D sound. So that's the great thing about audio is that there truly is something out there for everybody. But then you get them people who they just refuse to use their ears in a hobby which involves your ears. And I just think this is totally crazy to judge audio equipment when you haven't even heard it. So my kind of advice would be is that yes, do look at the specifications because dynamic range, signal to noise ratio, all this stuff is important, but it's by no means the be all and end all of things. And it's best to always go to a store, try out the uh, piece which you are looking at and just go from there basically. Maybe do a comparison as well that would be my advice regarding that front. This brings us on then to the third point of today's video, and that is cables. Now, how many times have we seen people deny the use of cables or the quality of cables in a hi-fi system? And you only have to look at one of the videos I posted a while back um, regarding you know, little tweaks you can do in your hi-fi system to determine kind of the amount of people out there what don't believe cables make a difference. And I think oftentimes what you'll find is, is that the people who deny cables have, perhaps haven't actually used these cables in their system and given it a go for themselves. My advice would be that if you are somebody out there and you've just gotten into audio, um, you know, just go out there, purchase a $100 power cable. I would probably start with a power cable since that tends to make the biggest difference when we're talking about electronics. I mean, you probably have your speaker cable already sorted. I mean, to some people out there, this might sound like fairly common sense and sort of, you know, stuff you need to have ticked off early on. But there is a hell of a lot of people out there, even to this day. And as I said, I know by one of my uh, previous videos and from working in the store who just cannot wrap their head around the idea of cables. So, yeah, I mean... At the end of the day, right, you just need to use your ears to determine whether something um, is making a difference for you. Obviously, your standard of hearing or your amount of experience listening to equipment will come into it as well. 
I think the biggest, or I would say the best way to actually judge um, a cable's performance is just installing it in your system, take out that stock uh, power cable you was using before perhaps, and just let it sit in your system for a while. We have to remember that cables do take time to actually burn in. So yeah, just let it sit in your system for a while, play music for a few weeks, you know, listen on and off, and then maybe after a month or two, go back to the stock power cable you were using before, or the stock interconnection you were using before, and I'm guaranteed you will notice the difference. So yeah, just give that a go. If you're on the fence about cables, if you're not sure whether they make a difference, use the uh, tactic I just mentioned, and you should be able to find um, some improvement in your overall system's performance. So where does this leave us then? Well, I think at the end of the day, in a system, doesn't matter if it's a high-end system, or an entry level system, it's all about balance. If you can get the balance right in your system, if you can get the synergy right between components, then you will be golden and you will not have to stress about any of the worries which an audio file typically does go through. That is the main takeaway I think to take from this video today is just try and find as much balance in your system as possible and you should be all right. But let me know what you think down in the comments section down below. Let me know if you agree with what I've talked about in this video today. If you do disagree, then um, let me know. You know, I'd like to hear your opinion um, regarding that. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Drop a like and subscribe if you did enjoy and um, I'll see you in the next video. Do take care.